game up hard hydration they make it an adult beverage with a special blend of electrolytes comes in four flavors currently a variety pack of fruit punch orange lemon lime and grape awesome yeah and it's a full flavor 110 calories per can low carb ufc 300 this weekend man i am here for this card we're gonna go all over the main card chevy you wanted just to announce some of these undercard fights because there's so many good fights coming up yeah we're just gonna go through every fight because every single fight on this card is tremendous so the card starts off with davis and figueredo Coming up to Bantamweight against Cody Garbrandt. That's how the card's kicking off. Davidson. Going with Davidson. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick Cody. Okay. I think Cody's ten, uh, chin gets tested, but uh, I'm going to pick him. I think he's he's a live dog. I want him, but I just feel David. I, I still don't trust that chin completely with that power of Davidson. But Bobby Green versus Jim fucking Miller. And, ah. you know, I think that Bruce needs to... Needs to call him Jim fucking Miller. That's what he wants. Show him some respect. Bobby Green. I love Jim Miller, but I feel like Bobby Green's been fighting a little more consistent lately. He's much slicker and everything, too. I think Jim Miller gets a sub. That would be the way Jim wins. Okay. Yep. Jessica Andrade versus Marina Rodriguez. That's a very good matchup. Very close fight. I like the way Andrade looked in her last fight. To me, there's still some life in her. I'm going to go with Andrade. Yeah, I feel exactly the same. I'm picking her as well. And then to finish off the early prelims, Jalen Turner versus Hanato Moicano. What a fight. Ah, I love that fight. What kind of? I can't say his name. But yes, you know who I want. He is wild, but I'm going to pick Jalen Turner. I think he's just so tall and long and great yeah. at range then we're going to move on to the regular prelims Sadiq Youssef versus Diego Lopez I'm glad Diego has made it on this card he's a very exciting up-and-comer yeah, yeah. I'll go Diego Lopez actually. me too I think he gets a KO Holly Holm versus UFC debutant and gold medalist Kayla Harrison this is tougher than you think because I don't know what Kayla Harrison's going to look like after her weight cut big weight let's cut assume, yeah let's assume she has an amazing weight cut I'll pick her. I'll say she gets it done. But at the same time, Holly Holm has all that experience and makes this weight all the time. Now, I'm going with Holly. <laughs> I'm going with Holly for the upset. I'm going to pick Kayla. I'm going to say submission. I, okay. I think she's she's probably, I mean, she knows the weight cut is her biggest battle. She's a winner, so I think she'll have had it figured out by now. You're right. You're right. Never mind. Cancel that. I'm going to agree with you on that one because also if she misses weight, she'll probably win anyway. So it doesn't matter. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Calvin Cater versus Aljamain Sterling. Aljo moving up to featherweight. Got to go with Aljo. Cater's great. Slick on the feet. I think Aljo is going to be pretty good at this weight class, and I could see Aljo maybe contending for the featherweight title. Not necessarily winning it, but I could definitely see him earning a shot here with a few key wins. Yeah, I think his body's really made for featherweight. Uh, I don't really understand how he was making Bantamweight, but I think you're going to see a whole new level to him. I'm with you. I'm picking Aljo as well. And then the feature bout on the prelims, which would be a main event on a lot of fight night cards, Yuri Prohaska versus Alexander Rakic. I'm going to go uh, Prohaska. I think Prohaska is just that good. And honestly, I don't think he fought the best stylistically fight the last time against Pajara, and I still think he almost won on a couple different occasions there. So I just feel like, yeah. Yeah, I'm picking Prohaska too. I think he's so unor unorthodox. It's very hard for Rackett to deal with that. His explosiveness is going to be the key. So I'm picking Yuri by TKO. Let's get into this main card. We're going to go through the whole main card here elaborately. So we're going to start off with Bo Nickel versus Cody Brundage. All right. This is a tough fight, I think, possibly for Bo Nickel. I mean, he might dominate, but this is definitely a step up in competition. Cody Brundage is 10 and 5, 5 KOs, 3 subs, 1 decision, 1 disqualification win. He's on a 2 fight win streak, and his last win was a slam, but it was a slam KO. So, you know, Cody's had some fights in the UFC. And I don't think that uh, he's just going to get in there and submit it in a couple seconds. Uh, that being said, Bo Nickel, 5-0, TKOs, three subs, one of the greatest prospects of all time, and no one's came close to even touching him yet. So, although he might get some resistance, I'll still say the smart money's on Bo Nickel. Yeah, Bo Nickel round one submission, I'll probably go. probably early on. So, unless Bo just decides he wants to showcase his striking he just thinks he's we know he's confident so in, if he thinks he's just levels above cody wants to risk it wants to showcase that striking who knows at that point because we haven't really seen it yet we still don't know enough about 
Bo, but Cody's a good step up for him. So I expect the round one sub, but if he goes to striking, who knows how it ends. Regardless, if Bo wins this fight, he needs a top 10 opponent. I know he only has five fights, but he's looked so dominant. I think you got to get him a, a top 10, at least a top 15. Charles Oliveira versus Armand Saruki. And I am so excited for this card. Armand is a dog. He is 21 and three. He's got nine knockouts, five subs, seven decisions. He's eight and two in the UFC. He's won three in a row, but here's the kicker. His last win was a TKO, what did it KO, over uh, Benil Dariush. And uh, Benil was on his way to his title shot until recently. So Benil, although a couple of hard fights in his last couple of fights, that is such a quality win to get the finish over Benil. He knocked him out while he only had one foot on the ground, too. And if you remember That's that, he was like going to throw a knee and adjusted and threw a hook while his yes. leg was in the air. And not, he knocked like basically took him off his feet it's very impressive it is however <laughs> however this is the big big step up right here all right mm -hmm. charles Oliveira, 34 and 9 and 1 10 ko's 21 subs three decisions former lightweight champion uh three fight of the nights 13 performance of the night bonuses all right this guy's the all-time Bonus king, I believe, or at least most performance nights in UFC. Most yeah. submissions, for sure. Definitely. Most submissions, yeah. yeah. He had submission tonight three times, too, back when they used to do that. Charles Overa is looking to get back into this. I don't think he's been out farting around. Like, I think he's been out making sure he's ready to come back. So, uh, I got Charles Overa here. Could be a fun fight, because Charles always seems to get himself in dog fights. But I'm going to say Charles Overa, second round submission. He might get knocked around a bit a few times here, but... By that second round, I think you'll catch him with something. Yeah, I love Charles. Who doesn't? But I think Armin is a problem. Charles always very dangerous and can finish anywhere. But I think Armin is technically better everywhere except for submission offense. I think that Armin frustrates Charles and forces him. That forces him to get a little bit wild. And when that chaos happens, I, I look for Armin to get the TKO. So I'll say around three TKO for Armin. And I like Armin, but I would prefer Charles to win. So I'll be sad. The BMF title fight, Justin Gaethje versus Max Holloway. Let's start off with Gaethje. 25 and four, 20 KOs, one sub, four decision. Former interim UFC light heavyweight champion. Current U UFC BMF championship. He's had fight of the night seven times versus performance of the night five times. Okay. This guy's just another bonus machine here. I think he's got like, yeah, the highest significant strike accuracy percentage in UFC lightweight division history. Okay. So he's Mr. Excitement. But then you got his opponent. All right. Max Holloway, who's 25 and seven, 11 KOs, two subs, 12 decisions. Former UFC featherweight champion. He's had like a knockout of the night, fight of the night six times. His performance of the night too. This guy, he's, again, we're talking about two exciting bonus machine fighters that like to bring it. Here's where it gets interesting. I always tried to make this weight uh, before. This is a step up in weight class. And we saw uh, against Dustin Poirier, who Justin and, Dustin and Justin have had, you know, great fights. Justin just KO Dustin, but uh, it's a different time. All right. Max looks different. Max looks bigger. Max, unless it's, unless it's fading right now, he has one of the most all time Hall of Fame chins in this sport. He's right? never been knocked down in the never octagon before. Down. Heavy, heavy volume puncher. This is going to get fun. All right. My prediction Justin Gaethje's going to knock him around. Justin Gaethje's going to come close to finishing him. More than anybody, they even knock him down. Max is going to survive. And I know people thinking he's going to get Tony Ferguson. I'm going to go the opposite. Max will survive. Max will win this. And Max will TKO Justin. I'm saying it right now with volume shots in late round four. Yeah, I, I love both guys. But obviously, Max is my favorite fighter. When this fight was announced, I was saying I wasn't interested and I didn't want to see it because of the things that you talked about where Max had gone up before. But after watching the countdown shows and Max's YouTube, I'm sold on the fight for sure. Like you said, he he's putting the weight on. And he's doing it right this time. So hopefully that will be enough. I hope that everyone is truly appreciative of these guys because they are basically the last of a dying breed of a certain type of fighter respectful strikers who are just cool as shit you know so i hope that people are going to appreciate this 
And I think we're going to get an all time great fight from both guys here. I I think Max leans on his granite chin. Gaethje gets wild going for a finish. And in turn, Max stuns him and finishes him. I'm with you. I'm picking Max by TKO, but I'm going to say round three. And we could be wrong. Max could get knocked out for the first time in his career. But uh, I'd imagine Justin is going to be a favorite, maybe just a slight favorite. I'm not sure. Knowing Justin and knowing, I think it would be a big feather in his cap if he could knock out Max. And I think he's going to go for that very, very hard. And I think that that's going to be his downfall. That's what I said. I said that a few weeks ago. I think we talked about it. And I think he could get hung up on that. And that was before I even realized the size Max was putting on. So now I'm really sold on this. But We'll see. All right, let's get into this co-main event. Zhang Weili versus Yan Zhaonan. All right, Yan is 17-3-1, and one, eight KOs, nine decisions, and she's coming off uh, one of those wins over Jessica Andraz, too. So that's very impressive because we know how good Andraz is and how powerful she is. Performance of the night, she's she's a real deal candidate here. However, Wei Zhang, Wei Li Zhang, Zhang Wei Li, 24 and 3, 11 KOs, 8 subs, 5 decisions. You know, she's the woman's strawway champion right now, but just the performances she's been putting on over uh, Rose and everybody in the finishes she's gotten recently. She looks like such a killer. Her wrestling, right? She's been training with Cejudo. She looks so much bigger and stronger than everybody at this weight class to me. I'm not picking against Zhang right now. I'm just not. I'm going to go. Saying Wei Li, and I'm going to go round two, TKO, round and pound. It's a shame that this fight isn't on a card that's based in China. Big opportunity to draw attention from a giant market that the UFC would like to garner more of. But it is on a excellent card, so hopefully they can draw some some Chinese eyes. But uh, I respect Yan's striking. She has good takedown defense, but unless she's greatly improved, I'm with you. I have to pick Zhang. I think she's faster, stronger, more well-rounded. I think this one ends up going the distance. Both girls probably hurt each other at some point, but I, I think it goes the distance, and I think Zhang retains her title. All right, let's move on to this main event. Alex Pajara versus Jamal Hill for the light heavyweight title. Jamal Hill is 12-1-1, one, one, seven KOs, five decision. He's the former light heavyweight champion, beating Glover Teixeira. Pajara, 9-2, seven KOs, two decisions. This guy was one of the greats in kickboxing and had a legendary kickboxing career. And now he came over to MMA and he's been fast tracked and he's really put the work in. He beat his rival in kickboxing, Israel Adesanya, for the middleweight championship. Stylistically, a great fight for him because he's bigger than Izzy and the way they fight. Someone's always going to get knocked out. He got it. But then they had that rematch and Izzy knocked him out. He went up to light heavyweight. He had that uh, match there at fight with Jan. Mm -hmm. And I thought Jan might have controlled him a little bit more. But at the end, it was very impressive because he didn't get submitted. He ended up getting the decision. You know, now he's the light heavyweight champ again uh, because of Prohaska, the way he fights too. He likes to throw down. He's an orthodox, but that plays right into Behera's hand. So Behera's had, Behera is very talented, but he's also had some luck with some of these matchups here. Don't think that's necessarily going to change here. Jamal Hill is good. He's coming off a really bad injury, though. He never lost his title. And it's one of these fights because Jamal is, I would say, more well-rounded, like a lot of people are right now over uh, Behera because Behera is inexperienced still in MMA. I could see Jamal finishing him. I could see him. I could even see he's talked about he's going to go there and strike with him and do it. And there are ways I could see that even happening, but I'm not going to pick that. I'm going to say if you are going to do that and Jamal Hill, he makes me believe when I listen to him, Mm -hmm. that doesn't to be his plan. I think it's going to backfire. I like Alex Behera. I'm going to say round two again. I guess I like that number today. Round two TKO because I think it's going to be fireworks. There is something about this guy's career where when the spotlight's on brightest, other than that rematch with, Stop it. And UFC 300, this guy seems to know how to win. Champions know how to win. So I'm going with Alex Behera. Round two TKO. Yeah, I'm with you. I think people are disrespecting Hill when it comes to this fight. Alex gets hit. Jamal is big. He's rangy and he hits like a truck. So I think he could KO Alex, even though Alex is technically better on his feet. The way he closes distance is, is tough for a guy like Alex, who is a counter puncher, but he just gets in there so hard, he'll trade those shots. So the real question, though, is. Hill's injury, the Achilles injury. He has had nine months to recover. And if you watch football, you know Aaron Rodgers, similar injury, similar time frame. But Hill has 
to my knowledge, remained in the testing pool. So I don't think he's using all the same peptides or whatever other supplements to get that injury where it needs to be. So that is a big question mark. Uh, Nine months for that kind of injury, very tough. So that being said, I am going to pick Hill. I'm going to say, you know, he's he's come back right. And I think that Pajara might be a little bit overconfident. And and I think he's going to get touched up a little bit here and there. So um, I'm going to pick Hill KO round two. But if Alex targets that leg early and lands on it, I could see it going the other way and Alex get the KO. But I'm going to pick Hill round two KO. Yeah, I think it's going to be a dogfight. And I think eight of one of those guys has the ability to finish. Should be a fun card. A lot of finishes on this card, I think. If you haven't tried Game Up, then you are missing out. Imagine your favorite seltzer and your favorite sports drink had a baby. But it's way better than that. Each can is 110 calories. Low carb, 4.9 ABV. It's a nice light drink that is not light on flavor. Game Up comes in fruit punch, orange, lemon, lime, and grape. Pick it up at drinkgameup.com or at your nearest liquor store. 